In today's edition of the Funky Fresh Feeling Good Fired Up Orange on Friday show, we get to talk a little bit about the Cowboys having a very Merry Christmas present. National Signing Day was great. The day after, pretty good. The day after that, wait, that's today. I thought we were done. Wait, we're not done? And you're telling me we might be able to get some twins? Two sets of them? Oh, yeah. Yes, please. Sign me up. You are locked on Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovo. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on Twitter at All Day O State. Today, we're partially brought to you by Game Time. Get in on the action. Download the Game Time app today. Make sure you use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. National Signing Day was really good, regardless of what the quote-unquote expert punditry has to say, because this is the same quote-unquote expert punditry that says year in and year out that Oklahoma State cannot recruit, yet we found ourselves in the Big 12 title game two of the last three years. Now, we got to get over the mountaintop and add some more Big 12 titles to the trophy case. Absolutely, which is precisely why we're talking about National Signing Day yet again, because it's not just about the 18 dudes we brought in. We all know, in order for you, as a team, to be able to make a championship caliber run, it starts and stops with the first string. Okay, yeah, that's fair. But how does the first string get better than everybody else's first string in the league? It's by the level of competition they go up against every single day. So your two deep is very important. Your three deep is even more important. What is on your scout team is probably the most important for preparation. Because if you're not prepared, then when you do face somebody that just overpowers you, you're not going to be ready. You're going to be caught flat-footed, one-footed, no-footed, just not ready. The depth that we're going to be able to bring in with this class, or at least should slash could be able to bring in with this class, I think is what's going to help us get to that next level of bringing home those championships instead of just playing in the championships. So we've covered the dudes that have already signed. And right now we are trying to orchestrate numerically what the scholarship number is going to be, right? How many high school guys we have coming in? Is there anybody else going to transfer? How many more transfers do we have coming in? Who's going to count against the academic standing? So on and so forth. So while we're trying to navigate through all that stuff, we're just going to do our job. And our job here is to talk about the people who should slash could be wearing cowboy uniforms very soon, very soon, whether it be uh, whether on scholarship or preferred walk-on program. And we all know Oklahoma State definitely has one of, one of the best preferred walk-on programs in America because we have the only strength and conditioning coach in the United States making over a million dollars because that's what he's worth. All right, so let's kick this thing off with a quarterback. Now, if we couldn't get Isaac Wilson, and we didn't, and we couldn't get Mayalake Smith, which we did, if we couldn't get those dudes, we were definitely, definitely going to need to go after River Warren. Although River Warren does have offers from places like Arkansas State, Marshall, Bowling Green, Florida Atlantic, so on and so forth, he believes that he can play at this level. He is the king of deception on film, I'll tell you that. But it's 390 pounds. It's not like the canvas is completely devoid of stuff to work with. This is the same exact size and frame that Garrett Rangel came in with when he first got to Oklahoma State. Since then, he's been able to put on roughly 20 pounds. So we get the same type of thing out of River Warren. Production is there. Now. I do think maybe what's holding him back from a lot of the big-time Power 5, D1 style of offers is the developmental tag that's currently attached to him because he does have a pretty funky, awkward-looking release, all right? 
it does kind of look like he's putting every ounce of energy and effort in his body to make a decent amount of the throws, but the ball gets there. And his ability to lead receivers and throw them open is pretty impressive. The anticipatory abilities for him to throw into windows before his wide receivers even contemplated breaking yet is really good. He's also willing to stand in the pocket and take something on the chin if need be to hit those windows. So he's definitely got a lot to work with. We love production. Mike Gundy's talked about production. We also love our pipelines. And with Robert Jones, a cowboy, coaching Dell City and getting, obviously, Rodney Fields and getting Ladanian Fields, let's continue this pipeline thing here. Because with Robert Jones at the helm, not only are we going to know what we're getting, but we're going to know the kid on a more personal basis. And as for production, yeah, he's got that too. The dude put up 2,288 yards, averaging 17 yards per completion, 208 yards a game, 32 touchdowns, only five picks, a couple rushing touchdowns in there as well, averaged almost three touchdowns a game with a quarterback rating of 142.7. So, yeah, Tim Rattay doesn't have a devoid of talent canvas to work with here. He's 6'3", 190. And Tim Rattay, although he hasn't been killing it per se, from what I've gathered, he's not been the issue. right? Tim Rattay is confined or has been confined up until halfway through the season to strictly just working with only the quarterback stuff, having no involvement offensively. Well, some of that's kind of grown. So as Tim Rattay grows in this job, maybe another step in growth, we'll see the emergence of the Garrett Rangel that I think is going to show up in 2024, and that'll give us a pretty good barometer for what he could potentially do with River Warren. That's not the end-all be-all, of course, but I, I do think it uh, it sets something up there. All right, we've got a lot more guys to cover. Real quick, i got to make sure that you're covered as well. Guys, we, we, we just hit on it. You don't want to have to stress about buying tickets because it's not very fun to be scrambling at the last minute. You got to worry about flights. You got to worry about rental cars. You got to worry about all that stuff. We'll take the guesswork out of it by downloading the Game Time app today because Game Time's got you covered. It's the fast and easy way for you to buy tickets to sports, music, comedy, theater, whatever you want near you. And with the last minute killer deals with all in prices and their, their best price guaranteed, it takes all of the guesswork out of you buying tickets. See the view of your seat before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you get there. It's not like you're going to pay for this section and end up in this section. This is the point. With the all-in prices, they show your total up front, so there's not any hidden fees built in there. Buy the tickets in seconds. Now, I've also got these cool deals called zone deals where you pick the section and game time will pick the seat for an average of 18% off savings. Download the Game Time app today. Create your account and use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, download Game Time app today. Use that promo code Locked On College, all one word, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Go get Game Time. You will not regret it. Just like a lot of these fellows, whether they are on scholarship or a PWO preferred walk on it would likely behoove you to end up as Cowboys. Just go look at the pedigree of Rob Glass. And that, that'll speak volumes. All right, so let's continue. You got the quarterback to come in and help with competition. Well, he's got to have somebody to throw to. Guys, Brighton Gaddy, six foot one, 170-pound wide receiver out of Sulphur, Oklahoma. He has uh, some DU offer, D2 offers. Matter of fact, he currently has a D2 offer from the Division II national champion in Harding. He's got the availability to go to University of Central Arkansas. He can go to Valparaiso, amongst other places. But we do have a need in the wide receiver room. Of course, we really, really like our young guys in Cameron Hurd, Mason Gilkey, Jalen Pope, Tyke Andrews, which some of those guys will definitely be playing against Texas A&M in the Texas Bowl. But you, you can't really coach speed. Now, you can coach somebody who has speed to be a little bit faster, but 
Brighton Gaddy has it. He's already the anchor leg of his four by 100 team that dominated in the prelims and would have won a state title if they didn't drop the daggone baton. But he's also 22 second guy in the two hundo. And you know, I love my, my football highlights, right? But I'm telling you, I got lost in some of his track stuff. And let's be real. Shane Gillis may have said it best. We all love white dudes that can kill it at wide receiver and running back because 95% of us can't run that fast. We are not faster or more physically gifted than a lot of the fellows born with better pigmentation. They're just genetically more gifted. And let's face it, they're faster, they're better 95% of the time. So when a white dude is this fast, we all get into our inner Shane Gillis mode and we're, we're like, oh, 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 he broke away. Go, man. Go, man, you got, oh, oh, they got him. What a good run by him. What a smart heads-up run by him. Guys, <laughs> Brighton Gaddy is that dude. And after losing Arlen Bruce, right, I mean, he returned Mike Gundy's hospitality by leaving Oklahoma State to go pro. But we need another quick twitch speedster that can help represent. Tyke Andrews is a bad man. Rashawn Woods built product. But I really like what Brighton Gaddy has to offer. And when you do look, I mean, they run in a system where it's 80% running the ball, right? They just, it is what it is. So they get offers off of just, you know, a few different sets of highlights. It's pretty daggone impressive. And the dude did put up like 500 yards this year in a majorly running oriented offense. So I think that he hasn't even quite scratched the surface of what he can be. And this is precisely what Rob Glass needs in his life. So, uh, yeah, yeah, give me that that fella. Next on the list is if we're talking about best names, guys, we all know that uh, somebody did, like, shorts of the best names of all of the, the signatures. And our main man, Willie Nelson, was on there. This guy would be on there, too. And I think he would actually be ahead of Willie Nelson. This is Cannon the Hammer Wood. The six foot one, 215 pound linebacker from Piedmont, Oklahoma, is a straight A student with almost a 3.8 GPA. He was voted the best two way player in all of 5A2 football. He currently has the opportunity to go to UCO or Friends University, my alma mater. The dude rushed for 1,250 yards as a junior and then followed it up with another 1,341 yards. This year is a senior on top of 132 tackles, 21 tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, two picks, plus a pick six. He is the epitome of the Cowboy culture, and he is exactly what the Cowboy culture needs right now. Now, Coach Terry Harrison and friends, don't be mad at me, all right? I'm, an, uh, I'm a friends alum, but I'm also selfish. I cover O-State for a living. I need to see what a year of Rob Glass can do with Cannon the Hammer Wood. He's an absolute animal of a player, and I want to see what we can do with that. So, Cannon, I'm a happy camper either way. If you end up at Friends University, I'm a happy camper. If you end up at Oklahoma State University, I'm an even happier camper. Guys, this kid is going to be able to carve out a nice little role. And I don't see the 6'1", 215 pounds being an obstacle because, oh, I don't know, somebody on the roster playing linebacker right now named Xavier Benson. I have no worries. So, Cannon the Hammerwood, hit me up, brother. Because I'm hoping that you did get the chance to see Friends University's new $3.2 million facilities. But, dude, you and this Brian Nardo, Joe Bob Clements, and Rob Glass system, I'm telling you, I'm getting some uh, some mini minor Malcolm Rodriguez vibes here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Next on the list is a set of twins, JC and Jaron Hyde. You know I love my legacies. And, you know, we've done pretty well with twins. Pretty sure everybody in the NFL just watched what Tylen Wallace was able to do. Trayson Wallace is killing it as a wide receiver coach on staff right now. So let's build another legacy line in Topeka, Kansas. By way of Washburn Rural High School, 
JC is six foot three, 225 pound linebacker. You ready for this? 173 tackles, 112 solo, 61 assisted, 17 tackles for loss, eight sacks, two picks, three forced fumbles, two fumble returns, four block kicks. And then you got to take into consideration his brother is not chopped liver either. They teamed up to help Washburn Rural go to an 11-1 record, right? They were league champs, regional champs, sectional champs. Mike Gundy loves winners. Mike Gundy loves multi-sport guys and production-based guys. And they both accomplished this. His brother, Jaron, who's, uh, I guess, maybe referred to as the lesser known of the two, says, hold my beer and watch this. At 6'2", 215, he pitches in his own 123 tackles, 66 solo, 55 unassisted, 10 tackles for loss, four sacks, four picks, with a house call, three forced fumbles, four fumble recoveries, and three of those he took for touchdowns as well, plus several pass breakups. So, basically, if you this team and one of them didn't get you, the other one was likely definitely to get you. Yeah, but There's nothing you could do. And I'll say it right now. This feels like another Landon Dean-style situation. In playing at Friends University, I do have a lot of familiarity with that area. I am very well aware that these hard-nosed, old-school, grinded-out style of dudes are precisely what we want. No, 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 not want. It's what we need at Oklahoma State. This is what we need to continue to go to Arlington year after year after year. If discipline, accountability, work ethic, and dedication are your cup of taters, then you two gentlemen are already cowboys. If being overlooked, underappreciated, and undervalued is how all of us constantly live in O-State Nation, then you're already a cowboy. If you absolutely love the process and you live every day to embrace the suck, as we said in the Army, right, just to embrace the suck, if it's raining, sleeting, snowing, Nine degrees, that sucks. Bring it on. If you got to ruck 10 miles and then do it again, that sucks, but bring it on. If you're running low on ammo in the middle of a firefight, well, you know what? All shucks, that sucks, but you still got a knife in hand, so bring it on. If you're that style of guy, then you're already a cowboy. And then we got another set of twins, Ashton and Aiden. Isaacs, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult because they're not as geographically available as Topeka, Kansas. But Ashton is a six foot four, 285 pound left tackle from Turpin High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's a left tackle at the Division II Region 8 level in Cincinnati, Ohio. But the first thing you see is his size. The next thing you see is his inability to get beat. I really honestly only think that he doesn't have some D1 Power 5 style offers is because everyone is scared to death of the dude. When you watch his tape, it's like watching the, the blind side, right? When he picks the kid up and like carries him out of bounds. Ashton's just a massive dude that absolutely dominates everybody in front of him. To the point even that linebackers physically avoid him and run away from him on film. And defensive ends quite often just dive straight into the ground and offer themselves up as free pancakes. On film, he definitely, definitely looks agile and physical enough to play tackle at this next level. But I would assume that after a little bit of the body by glass, number one in the country style stuff, I think we'll kind of bump him inside more Cole Birmingham style. But the film indicates he's definitely good enough to play at this level. Now, his brother Aiden, six foot three, 280 pound. He plays tackle. He plays guard. He plays defensive tackle. He plays linebacker. Most of the film is with him at right tackle. He does have a couple clips here and there of defensive end and linebacker. I'll be honest with you, his clips of linebacker are slightly perplexing. All right. But he does show another thing that you also can't coach, which is effort. His base platform, it needs some work, right? There's. But there's also several clips of him blocking two, three dudes 20 yards down the field on any given play. So the dude can play. He just may not be a natural offensive lineman. He may not be a natural tackle, which is 
why I think the idea here would be to glass him up a bit, right? Give him the kiss method treatment at defensive tackle and say, hey, dude, just dominate this area of operation, own the A-gaps, eat up double teams, and let our back end dudes do the daggone work because that film level will still put you in the next level. Last but not least is another lineman in Jonas Nance. This six foot five, 265 pound offensive tackle from Shiloh Christian in Springdale, Arkansas, definitely plays both sides of the ball. Violent, mean, and nasty. Just like we like him. That's what his film shows. His outside shoulder punch is definitely next level already. And we do have a phenomenal connection here because the former Stiller High School coach who led Stiller High School to a state title and played for another state title, Tucker Barnard, is his coach in, at Shiloh Christian in Springdale, Arkansas. So we know he's very well coached. He's easily adaptable, malleable, and coachable. And with the level of violence of action displayed by Jonas, I do think it makes him an ideal candidate for what we offer at Oklahoma State. So again, it's not just about you know, the the main scholarship guys. Some of these dudes are going to be preferred walk-ons, but there's not a better place in America to send your kid if he's going to be a PWO because there's nobody else in America that can get your kid physically more ready than Oklahoma State's Rob Glass. Not possible. So I love my legacies. We do good with brothers. We do good with twins. So bring them on down. Again, Coming from Topeka, Kansas is a little bit easier than Cincinnati, Ohio. So there is still some things to kind of shake out here. But guys, some of these dudes will play football in a Cowboy jersey. And some of these dudes will start someday in a Cowboy jersey. This is another example of how in today's NIL and transfer era, a lot of these recruiting expert analyst, they don't divvy up the same amount of time as they used to to high school film. They just don't. So unless you are massive and you're at a big school or you just pop or everybody's always talking about you, the guys like these guys are going to keep, keep getting swept under the rug more and more and more. Because let me look at uh, Colorado, for example. They took six high school kids. That is not good for the growth of this game. It's just not. If you need to use the transfer portal for a year or two, that makes sense. But if you're depending solely on the transfer portal, that means more and more and more high school kids are going to get left behind. Hopefully, the kids that we have coming in can help kind of stem the tide a bit. Right? Speaking of Tim stemming the tide. It is Christmas, and we've got a Christmas present coming, but you got to make sure that uh, you've got the finances to make Christmas the best that it physically possibly can be. And as the weather gets cold, NFL deals stay hot with FanDuel. Right now, our new customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any $5 winning money line bet. That's $150 bones back in your pocket off of a $5 money line bet. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's literally not a better time to get in on the action. The app is safe, secure, and super easy to use with a wide range of variety of options to choose from. Player props, over-under spreads, Heisman, Super Bowl, division title. Get in on it with FanDuel.com slash locked on. Go there now to kick off your NFL money-making season. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel the official partner of the NFL. Speaking of the NFL, we've got an NFL running back. We all know that. But as the days continue to grow, people are a little nervous. I'm here to let you know that there was possibly going to be some announcements and decision-making processes that were finished yesterday. Some of those have been pushed back a couple days. One of those has been pushed back from what I'm hearing either to Christmas or New Year's. Hopefully it's in the morning so we all get to wake up Christmas morning 
to a big, beautiful orange and black box of gifts that make everything else we open somewhat insignificant. I hope that happens. I have a feeling it's going to happen. I do have a feeling that we're all either going to wake up on Christmas Day or New Year's Day and have a beautiful present under the proverbial cowboy tree. I do still expect at least one of the two, Jalen Lucas, the running back slash wide receiver slash return specialist slash Tyreek Hill looking dude from Indiana and Reggie Grimes from OU. I'm very confident we get one of the two. I'm feeling pretty decent we get both of the two. Maybe they just want to wait a couple days, right, with Christmas being right around the corner. Very possible. Maybe they're waiting on the Texas Bowl. Results of the Texas Bowl. Maybe they're waiting to see what it's like to travel. I don't know precisely. But what I do know is the positions that we need to fill will be filled. And the mission for 2024 is now and always will be Arlington or bust, but with bringing a trophy home. Playing for titles is great. It's fun. But only winning one, that hurts the heart a little bit. It definitely hurts the heart a little bit. But, guys, imagine how many teams out here or fan bases of teams are kicking and screaming, hooting and hollering. I mean, heck, look at Texas A&M. Although they want to continue to prop up that their second, third string, fourth string, 90th string, whatever, is still better than Oklahoma State. I cannot wait for this game. I, I really can't. Like, I'm just, oh, I want to put this talk to bed so fast. This idea that the backups at Texas A&M are light years better than Oklahoma State. It's just, it's great. That that's what it is. We're gonna we're gonna stay positive. At the end of this, it's great. All right, Texas A and M. You can keep talking. Talking is is what you guys do, right? You talk a lot. We'll see if you can put up a big game. I don't think you can. I don't even necessarily think some of your dudes are prepared for what they're about to get. Our offensive line is going to try to maul you to death. Our defensive line is going to pick you up and put you right back down on the ground that your feet just came from because you're missing 14 dudes that have over 300 snaps. And we do know what's that, what that's like. That happened to us last season. And we put up a pretty valiant effort, you could say, against Wisconsin. But it wasn't enough. That's how this game is going to shake out. So I'm almost ready now to just get the daggone thing over with so all the Texas A&M and SEC fans can shut the front door. All right. As a Cowboy fan, though, um, we're sitting pretty, y'all. We don't have a lot of uh, major concerns. We don't have a lot of major defenses going out in the transfer portal. We're hearing good news coming in. We got good news on National Signing Day. We got good news yesterday. And I think this, this is good news today. Plus, I think the Reggie Grimes and Jalen Lucas news is still coming on top of, hopefully, a really nice Christmas present for all of us to enjoy together. All right, y'all. That's all we're going to have for this one right here. You know I love you. As always, God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. You could be anywhere. So happy you choose to be here. Go like the daggone thing if you like it. Dislike it if you don't because it's okay not to love everything. Share it. Comment. Subscribe. Make sure all of my podcasts and people's out there. Drive safe. Ride safe. And go leave a review. All right, y'all. Later, taters.